it's playing ah, there. Can you guys see the slide? Yes, yes, thank you. My super, super friends. So as often guys, we always start with, with prayer. Step one is prayer. So we'll open with prayer right now. Hold on, I'm just going to click. There we go. So we pray for the covering of the blood of Jesus upon me, upon everyone in this Zoom room and every person out there watching this, Lord. We pray that you may protect us, our family, our marriage, our health, our home, our finances, our businesses, and every area of our lives. In Jesus' name, I declare a wall of fire and hedge of protection for us all, and we break every hindrance, delay, blockage, witchcraft, devil, distraction against this Bible study in Jesus' name. Don't allow any evil spirits to touch us, oppress us, or cause us any harm. And they are not allowed to transfer or attach themselves to us or our homes. We bind and rebuke all demonic reinforcements sent by the evil one to attack, hinder, or frustrate the plans of God over our lives. And we dismantle them all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, if you're just tuning in, just mute yourselves or Melanie will mute you. All right? Because more people are coming in from the chat room. So hold on. We pray that everyone taking this Bible study to be set free from the tops of their head to the soles of their feet. And we let them walk into their purpose and destiny in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way and give them wisdom, knowledge, and discernment and clarity in Jesus' name. We declare a supernatural anointing upon this Bible study and everyone watching it in Jesus' name. Renew our mind body, soul, and spirit after this Bible study in Jesus' name. We put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the girdle of truth, the sandals of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of spirit upon everyone watching this Bible study in Jesus' name. All right. So guys, just for those who are, want to come in, the link is there. Just jump in the Zoom room and mute yourselves. We'll take a break later after one hour, all right? So Melanie will invite you guys and she'll mute you. So first off, everybody must be born again because in 1 John 5, 18, it says, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin and the one who was born of God keeps them safe and the evil one cannot harm them. Right now we're in the Philippines and it's, guess what? It's 9,000 confirmed coronavirus cases once again. So the numbers keep going up and everyone is living in fear, worry, and panic. Why? It's because they don't have Jesus. They have traditions, they have religions, but they don't really have Jesus. And that's why we need to be born again, to receive the Holy Spirit and to receive his protection. Because in Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Romans 6.23. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And whoever believes in the son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. So you see, it's biblical. God's wrath is real. And if you do not accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your sins will not be forgiven. You will not go to heaven and you will go straight to hell. That is biblical. This is the healthy fear of the Lord that I wanted to share with you guys because there's so many people who treat sin lightly. They don't have the fear of the Lord anymore or the reverence of God anymore. That's why many false teachers, false apostles, false prophets running amok because they don't know what lies ahead if they keep on sinning. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, every day I've been seeing people change their profile pictures to black because they lost a loved one to COVID, because uh, their relatives and their loved ones are getting sick, they're getting COVID, they're getting positive quarantine, you know, positive tests, and they're self-quarantining, and they have the fear of death. They don't know what to do. I pray that this Bible study will open your eyes so that they, you can share the gospel to them before God takes them away. 
if God chooses to. All right, guys? God heals, but sometimes it's if it's your time, God will take you. So this is the promise of God. This is the life verse. This is the memory verse of the deliverance ministry. It's John 10.10. 10. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So the Bible is very clear. The thief, this is Satan, the enemy, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Those are three things. And I, this is Jesus, came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So there's a lot of people who are blaming God for this COVID. There's a lot of people saying, God, God's will is for me to get sick or get COVID or die. That's not true. His will is for you to live an abundant life. The deception is when you allow Satan to steal, kill, and destroy your loved ones and your families, then you blame God. That's the ultimate deception. And we'll... We'll jump into that more later. So now today, we will need the Holy Spirit's infilling because the one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning and the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So sickness, disease, COVID, this is the devil's work and Jesus has come to destroy it. But we need to pray, guys. We are not praying and we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Also in Ephesians 5, do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery, but be filled by the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of people sad because there's, there's a liquor lockdown right now. So if you, wanna, if you want the liquor ban to end and drink moderately, just keep praying, guys. And you see in Acts 10.38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. That's Acts 10. 38. So God never put sickness on people in the New Testament. Jesus healed people in the New Testament. All right, guys? So this is the goal. On your left, there's a picture of a rat. Cute, right? <laughs> Joke lang. On the right, there's a picture of trash. There's a nice girl with floral pants and is surrounded by trash. So the evil spirits, they're a symbolism of the rats. All right? Where our goal is to get rid of the rats in the trash. We need to get rid of both. Why? Because rats thrive in trash. If we let the rats live, live around in our lives, but we don't get rid of the trash, guess what? They will just come back again. Shout out to Eleanor Joy, who's entering the Zoom room. Yes, deliverance for Eleanor Joy. <laughs> Melanie will admit you. So guys, what are, what are the trash in our lives? It's the wounds, it's the hurts, it's the pain, it's the trauma. It's all those things, all those bad things, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger. This is the trash, wrong mindsets, wrong theology. Yes, you did. Hi, Joy. Mute. Okay, thank you. She'll just mute everyone. Thank you. So what is this? You, the trash, these are the bad things that are happening to us. And we have to get rid of the trash and the rats. Why? We, we, like I said, we need to get rid of the mindsets and the evil spirits. Because if we just get rid of the rats, they will come back. They will come back. Shout out to Angel, who's coming in the Zoom room right now. So just mute yourselves, all right? So in Colossians 1, 13 to 14, it says there are two kingdoms. Ooh, someone's coming in. Shout out to Sedi Velasquez. Hello, just come in and just meet yourself, Sedi. Thank you. So there are two kingdoms. The Bible says there are two. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of the son that he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So what does this mean? There are two forces at work, dark and light. Good and bad. It's that simple, guys. It's black and white. There's good and there's bad. There is no gray area in the Bible. But there are some people out there who twist the scripture to fit their agendas and fit their gray areas. But it's very clear. There is darkness and there is light. There is good and there is bad. There are only two kingdoms. And in Ephesians 6.12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms. So guess what? We're not just against physical devils. We are against spiritual forces of evil. 
And if you don't know spiritual warfare, if you're not versed in it, if you don't study it, you are, are a punching bag for the enemy. He's just going to attack you and attack you and attack you. And even though you're a born again Christian, you love God, you pray a lot, you you read the Bible every day, you give to charity. But if you don't know that you're up against the enemy, you don't know that you have an enemy, guess what? You're going to get tired. You're going to get burned out just like in this pandemic. You're going to get wiped out if you don't know that you have the enemy. That's why you have to know the enemy. And you have to know the cross. In, in Colossians 2.15, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle over them, triumphing them over by the cross. So guys, Jesus already won the victory 2,000 years ago on the cross. All right? The powers and principalities have already been defeated. So your question to me is, if they're already been defeated, why is evil so rampant in the Philippines? Why do bad things happen to good people? Well, the answer is not everyone accepts Jesus. Not everyone is repenting from their sin. And not everyone is praying against the powers and authorities over this country, especially the Philippines. So that's why there's a lot of defeated Christians because they have tradition, they have religion, but they don't have Jesus. So here's my testimony. I gave my life to Jesus back in 2012. I, maybe you can see the picture when you watch the replay of my born again picture. I gave my life to Jesus on November 11, 2011 at a CCF retreat. Guess what? That's 11, 11, 11. So it's not an accident, guys, that uh, God saved me. And uh, I've been seeing 11, 11 so much this year and last year. So I surrendered my life to Jesus. I gave it to him. I joined a D group. I read the Bible. I prayed. And I joined a Bible study. So I had more friends. I left my old life behind of partying, of drinking, of smoking, of having so much anger against my dad and mom. I left all those behind. But somehow, whenever I try to have a breakthrough, bad things seem to start happening to me. And I don't know why. It's like something is holding me back. I want to do like the apostle Paul, right? In the Romans, he said, I want to do good, but I can't do it. And I don't know why. It's because there was spiritual warfare. There's such a thing as a an open door of the enemy to attack you. It's like when you open a door, when you tell your, all your bad vibes, evil spirits, or trash to leave, if that open door is still open, it's not locked, all the bad things can go through that open door again. And our goal in this Bible study is to identify the open doors in your life so that you can experience sozo. Sozo in the Greek means saved, healed, and delivered. It's to experience deliverance and fight back against the enemy using spiritual warfare. That's our goal. Identify the door, get rid of the rats, and get rid of the trash. All right, guys? So I was introduced to spiritual warfare because there was a downline of mine. Uh, going back. There was a downline of mine there. Again, replay. Because there was a downline of mine who was haunted. So I had a friend who was Phil Chai, and he couldn't sleep at night. And whenever he was at the Bible study, he was always wounded. He had physical scratches, bleeding scratches all over in him. And I asked him why. And he said he was haunted because something in his room, watching him, sleeping on his bed, pulling on the sheets, shaking his bed, and he couldn't leave. And I was like, what is this? This is way above just teaching the Bible and making disciples. So I asked my leader and he said, oh, bro, that's spiritual warfare. I can recommend you to this pastor in um, CCF Makati. So when I called him up and I met him, uh, he said that I think you have an open door for the enemy to attack you, bro. And my downline said, yeah, actually, how did you know? My parents actually dedicated me to Buddha when I was little in exchange for finances for, you know, for money and our business boomed but then my family died my mom and dad died an early death and I was left alone and all the money went away now I'm being haunted so we had to break that curse off it and soon as we did deliverance he started sleeping well again the start the scratches went away and the ghost the ghosts went away 
he wasn't haunted anymore. And that opened my eyes to spiritual warfare. So that's why I'm holding this Bible study because not a lot of people are teaching it anymore during this pandemic. Most churches are now afraid to speak about deliverance or teach spiritual warfare because they're too worried about their church growth and church numbers during this pandemic. So that's why the Lord led me to do this Bible study. It's going to be live on Facebook so you can watch the replay. And I'm going to post this on YouTube so it's, anyone can watch it for the benefit of everyone. Because God gets the glory, not me. Because we are more than conquerors. In Romans 8, 37 to 39, it says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, now watch this, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Lord Jesus. So angels or demons are no match for the love of God because we are more than conquerors. I, I just remember that be, being a conqueror means you win. You will have the victory. But being more than conquerors means that not only will you have the victory, you will have the spoils and rewards of living an abundant life. So it's not an accident that we are all in lockdown once again in March. What day is it? March 28, 2021. We're in lockdown again, just like last year. And just like last year, Passover. I bet there's a lot of churches who's going to quote Exodus and talking about the Passover, but what's really missing is the repentance of sins, guys. So it's going to start, ah, this is going to be a long lockdown. But here you go, guys. This is why the Bible studies here. So we can repent our, from our sins and drive out the demons. In fact, in Matthew 10, 8, it says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. This is Jesus' instructions because freely you have received, freely you give. He wants us to drive out demons. He wants us to drive out our inner demons, our own demons, and other people's demons as well, guys. That's what the Bible says. And we have three enemies in this world. And we have to know them all so that we can drive them out, guys. All right? Number one is the world. Number two is the flesh. And number three is the devil. Once again, the three enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world? Why is it the world? Because in Romans 12, 2, it says we have to renew our mind. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, his pleasing, perfect will. So you see, guys, the world is at the enemy of God's will. Just today, I saw there's a famous rapper called Little Nax, and he's launching Satan shoes. It's there, it, it has a Bible quote. Luke 10, 18 on the side of the shoe, it says, I saw late Satan fall like lightning from the sky. And there's a pentagram and a reverse cross and they're supposed to really blood on it. See, Satanists are not afraid anymore. They're not hiding. They're just, this is with Nike. Huh? Nike is a big brand. So, you know, evil forces in the world are now not afraid. They're coming out full blast because they know that the end is near. And it's up to you, the believers, to choose to renew your mind constantly and not conform to the world. Don't buy those shoes. The second is our flesh. In 1 John 2.16, it says, For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride and the possessions is not from the Father, but from this world. So you see, guys, being selfish, being self-centered, it's the desires of the flesh. And we have to crucify our flesh. The Bible says we have to crucify our flesh daily. And finally, it's Satan. Actually, the Bible has many names of Satan. I counted 12. Here's some. In John 8, he's called the father of lies. And in Matthew 4, 3, he's called the tempter. So these are, this is a clue on his nature and how he attacks people. He tempts people. He tempts you with lies. And he tells you lies. And when you, when you believe the lies, you have fallen into his trap. All right, guys? He's also the evil one. In Matthew says, he is evil. And he snatches away the seed that was sown into the heart. And in Matthew 12, 24, it says, the Pharisees called Jesus Beelzebub. They accused him of it, the prince of demons. And Beelzebub is the lord of the flies, lord of death, lord of filth. 
But the Pharisees were wrong, of course. It was Satan. Satan in Revelation is also accuser. So he accuses his brothers. So if you know Christians who always accuse other people, guess what? They are listening to the voice of Satan. They are not Christians at all. They need to repent because that's slander against the body of Christ. In 2 John 1.7, it says also that Satan deceives. He's a deceiver. He fools people. He tricks people. Like maybe you've known some of his lies. Like there's no hell. You won't go to hell. This is not a sin. Guess what, guys? You have to identify the lies that you are believing. In Revelations, the, he also has a Hebrew name. In, it's called Abaddon and Greek, the Apollyon. This is the angel of destruction. In 1 Peter 5.8, he's called your enemy. The devil prowls around like a royal lion. So see, he's the enemy. You think he's your friend, like what happened to my friend in the Bible study. He'll temp give you temporary happiness, but there's always a cost. If you make a deal with the devil, there is always a cost. That's why you need to know your enemy. In 2 Corinthians 11, it also says that Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. So if you're someone who always see a lot of lights in your room, like, wow, angels are talking to me. There's a lot of orbs and lights and auras. You have to identify if it's Satan or a legit angel from Jesus. All right. In, in Revelation 12, 9, he's called the devil or Satan. Plain and simple. The devil or Satan. In Isaiah, he's actually called Lucifer, son of the morning, or Lucifer morning star. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, he, Paul calls him the god of this world, who has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. So if you have a lot of unbeliever friends who are backsliding, committing sin, it's because they are blinded by the god of this world, by Lucifer. All right, guys. And in Ephesians 2, 1 to 2, it says, Numa... Strong's number 4151, it's the Greek word for spirit, wind, or breath. In Ephesians 2, 1, 2, it says, For you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the, the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work and who is disobedient. Why is this important? It's because spirits travel by air. That's right. I've been conducting deliverance since I was saved and healed and delivered. 2016. So that's like five years now. So for five years, I've seen some people manifest. The air, the spirit, the pneuma leaves their body through burping, vomiting, itchiness, headache, muscle movement, sweating, body chills, coughing, sneezing, crawling, yawning, tongue moving up and down, and shouting. In extreme cases, there's there's a demonic possession already, like what you see in the in the Hollywood movies, where the demons take over the body of the person and they start talking like, yeah, you can't have this girl. That's super extreme. If you know someone like that, throw them to us. <laughs> we will set them free because Jesus loves everybody and wants to set them free, all right? So you might experience some manifestations later. So how does Satan attack? There are 12, I've found 12 things in the Bible. There's probably more, but here's the 12 I found. Because in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So he wants to devour you guys. He wants to devour you and we have to be ready. We have to be alert. In Luke 4, he, one of his tactics is temptation. He tempts you. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until he had overtuned time. So he tempts you to fall. He tempts you with his traps. In Zechariah 3, 1, it says he accuses you. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and the Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. So you see, guys, again, if you know someone who likes to accuse people, that is from Satan. Into Corinthians 4, once again, he blinds the minds of the unbeliever. So he blinds people. That's why you see so many atheists. They, they're not believers and they're, they're super blind. They're always trying to use their logic and reasoning to disprove God. But if you study apologetics, God is real. There's archaeological archaeological evidence that Jesus was real, Israel is real, Jerusalem is real. 
There are atheist historians who confirm that Jesus is real. He walked the earth and God is man. And there's a lot of things in the Bible that disprove atheism. So if you take time to, to study them all, you really find out the truth. But if you're blinded, you'll just keep asking. I've met so many atheists. They just keep asking one question after another, taking the Bible out of context and accusing God of being evil. But when you dig deeper, when you have a relationship with these atheists, I have some friends. I ask them, why do you hate God so much? It's not because of logical reasoning. It's because uh, there's this one time I found out that his dad was actually a pastor and his mom was a worship leader. And they spent so much time in the church. They, they neglected raising up their son. So their son turned out to be an atheist. And he knows the Bible. He quotes it better than me. Out of context. Lang ha. He quotes it better than me. And he doesn't like Jesus. Why? It's not because of logic. It's because of bad upbringing. And in John 8, 44, it says, He's the father of lies. So if you believe the lie of the enemy, you're fallen into his trap. That's why we need to study the word of God. Remember when Satan tempted Jesus in the Bible, he used scripture and Jesus fought back with scripture. All right? In 2 Corinthians 10, there is a stronghold in the mind. For though we are at war, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight, with, we are not at the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds, demolish arguments, and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take every captive, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So what does this mean, guys? It means that if you believe in a lie long enough, it becomes a stronghold. Why is it a stronghold? Because the, the hold is strong. That's it, plain and simple. Ba-dooms. It's like, God doesn't love me. If you believe that lie long enough, it will be a stronghold. So identify. Maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. What's the stronghold that I've been believing? In 1 Corinthians 6.12, we are at, Satan attacks us through addicts, addictions and bondages. So if you see so many of your friends addicted to porn, to bondage, to alcohol, to gambling, to smoking, to drinking, finding joy because they don't have love or they're not loved or they just want to feel loved. At the core of these bondages, it's because these people want to feel joy because they haven't been loved. But if you only knew the love of Jesus, it will set you free from any bondage. And anger in Ephesians, it says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not give the devil a foothold. So a foothold is a small stronghold. It evolves into a stronghold when it becomes big enough. And guess what? Anger is now rampant in the Philippines. Anger against people who don't follow lockdown rules. Anger against masks. Anger against the government. Do you see how Satan is winning? It's because people aren't repenting enough. They're just getting mad complaining on Facebook, becoming trolls, fighting each other, complaining about what the government is doing. Instead, we need to be praying and repenting. But no one's doing that. That's why we're one of the fewer countries who are still in lockdown and spiking in COVID cases. So in Matthew 6, 23 it says Jesus turned to Peter and said get behind me Satan you are a stumbling block to me do not have in mind the concerns of God but merely human concerns so what does this mean it means if you're listening to the wrong voice if you only think about yourself and not about others you're listening to the wrong voice you're listening to Satan and in sickness in Luke 13 16 it says Satan has kept this woman bound for 18 long years. So Satan makes this, this woman sick. Question, does Satan cause all sicknesses? Sometimes, sometimes no. Sometimes uh, sickness is a choice of your physical consequence, physical consequence. So if you drink too much milk tea and the Holy Spirit tells you to stop, but you still drink and you get diabetes, it's not Satan's fault, it's your fault. All right, I just wanted to put it out there. Also in Acts 10, 38, we're called to heal all who are under the power of the devil. So disease is from the enemy. God will not make you sick just to make you well again, just to teach you a lesson. Well, right, guys? That's one of the lies of the enemy. Because some people believe, oh, God made me sick to humble me because I'm such a prideful person. No, 
Look at the Bible. Read it. Read it. God wants to heal you. He's the healer. In 1 Thessalonians, Satan wants to block fellowship. For See, it says, For we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan blocked our way. So if, you, if you're angry at Christians and you separate them and block from them and don't join Bible studies, guess what? You're falling into the trap of Satan. That's why being in fellowship is important. It's like a piece of burning coal in a bonfire. When you take that one piece of coal out of the burning fire, guess what happens? That coal turns cold and is no longer on fire. That's why it's, it's, you have to be on fire. Stay with on fire people. Be in fellowship with on fire Christians. And once again, in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal. Maybe stealing your finances, your joy, your loved ones, your family. That's the enemy. He's stealing you. So what do we do? That's a lot, right? Well, in Ephesians 4, 26 to 27, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in anger and give no opportunity to the devil. That's what we should do. Don't give him the opportunity to attack you. Do not give him an open door. Because when he gets an open door to attack you, you cannot control what spirits go in that door, go through that door, I mean. So if you're always angry and have unforgiveness against a person, guess what? Other things will come in. Greed, lust, addiction. I don't know why, but I'm sending someone who's been molested or sexually abused probably by their family member. If that's you, today, you're going to be set free. I send someone who's into family feuds or have, has a quarrel with family members. God is not pleased with that. And he wants to set you free from your anger. In fact, God wants you to fight back. God wants you to fight back. In the Bible, it says, James 4, 7, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's the promise. It's broken down into three parts. One, submit to God. Two, resist the devil. And three, he will flee from you. People actually do the opposite. When they're hurt and they're broken, what do they do? They flee from God. They resist God and they submit to the devil. That's not what you should be doing. You should be doing James 4.7. So guys, this is step one. Submit to God. So probably if there's someone here in the Zoom room or watching in the video like saying, I don't want to watch this anymore and I'm going to close the YouTube button, that's a sign from the enemy. He's, he doesn't want to leave your body and he wants to attack you secretly. If you're getting bored or sleepy, guess what? That's a sign from the enemy to attack you. So we need to wake up, guys. We just command the spirit of slumber to leave right now in Jesus' name. We want you to wake up. Because in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you. That is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. All right, guys, God always provides a way out. Always. Always. That's what the Bible says. And in Mark 16, 17, it says here, and these signs accompany those who believe. Guess what? If you believe in Jesus, you are a believer and you can drive out demons. That's Mark 16. It's very clear. 16, 17. Drive out demons. So our goal is to set you free from your demons and eventually set other people free who are demonized. Because there's, there's a lot of demons floating out right now in this pandemic. Because in 1 John 3, 8, the Son of God appeared to destroy the works of the devil, including COVID. All right? In Colossians 2.15, this is just a recap of earlier, God disarmed the principalities and powers and made a public spectacle over them, triumphing over them in him through the cross. All right? They've already been defeated. It's just that not a lot of Christians accept this victory. They still have a lot of questions. They're being blocked by their logical mind. They don't believe in spiritual warfare and deliverance. Their church, their pastor doesn't believe in spiritual warfare and deliverance. Well, guess what? You're, you will be constantly attacked if you don't claim the promises of God. It's like this. If I go to a restaurant and Jesus already paid for the bill, if I don't claim the food, if I don't eat it, if I don't ask the waiter for the food, guess what? It's not there. Did Jesus pay for it? Yeah. But how come I'm not enjoyed it? You didn't ask for it. You don't know it's there. 
That's why this Bible study is making you aware that there is a God and he's defeated Satan already 2,000 years ago. And in the future, in Revelation, it says the devil who had deceived them was overthrown and thrown into the lake of fire where the beasts and the false prophets were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So newsflash, the ending, spoiler alert, ending for Revelations, Satan is defeated, all right? That's what Revelation says. And that's why he's working double time because he knows the end is near. But don't worry, guys. God is sending back up. In Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who, are, who inherit salvation? So angels are the servants or believers. We should not worship angels, nor adore angels, or have statues of angels, or bow down to angels, or pray to angels. The Bible says they are spirits who minister to believers, to us. Because guess what? Even the devil has angels. Called, you know, they're called falling angels. And if you're accidentally worshiping a fallen angel, whoo, that's a big open door in your life. I always see this statue at St. Michael triumphing over the devil. And because in Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. So it's a promise, guys, that God will deliver you from all your demons. In Isaiah 40, 31, But those who wait on the Lord, but they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So he wants to renew your strength, guys, just like these eagles. And in Joshua 1, 9, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That's what Joshua says. And Jesus is always praying for you. He wants to set you free. And if, if it's not clear that Jesus doesn't want you free, guess what? Jesus wants you free. Because in Luke 22, 31 to 32, it says, Satan demanded you that he may sift you with, with, like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And you, when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers and sisters. So Satan accuses you and attacks you day and night. But Jesus is praying for you and defending you. That's why when you see the poster of this event, it's Jesus on his throne setting a guy and a girl free from their bondages. And at the lower part of the painting, when you look at it again, the devils, the anxiety, worry, the fear, the, the, the anger, they're all leaving because this is Jesus' promise. So being in the deliverance ministry and healing ministry, what are the top five most powerful weapons in the Bible? Number one, number one, the name of Jesus. Number two, the blood of Jesus. Number three, the word of God. Number four, praise and worship songs. And number five, the full armor of God. These are the top five. You can take a screenshot. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of God. Praise and worship song and the armor of God. All right? Demons leave in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Miles or Miles Tad. Nope, it's the name of Jesus. The blood of Christ. Demons fear this, the blood of Christ and the word of God. The more scripture you know to fight against the enemy, the more you can counterattack. Remember when Jesus was tempted, Satan quoted scripture, but Jesus quoted back scripture. The devil knows more scripture than you. So start reading your Bibles, guys. Praise and worship song. So if you keep a Spotify playlist like me, I have a private Spotify playlist. I can share it with you guys later on. It actually weakens the enemy. So if you're feeling anxious, depressed, or sad, don't listen to sad songs or worldly songs that want that convince you to take your life. Listen to praise and worship songs. It will calm you. And the full armor of God in Ephesians 6. You ask for it every day. You pray for it. It's like, God, Father God, I pray for the full armor of God upon my life in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. Just ask for it every day. I read so many books about it, and it always comes out. Rebecca Brown books, Derek Prince books, Deliverance books, so many books. They all mention the armor of God because they know 
demons see this armor of God and they want to fool you. They want to tell you, no, it's false. Don't believe in that. But guess what? They can attack you anytime if you don't have this armor. So guys, ask for the armor of God every day. Because in Revelation 12, it says, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb. This is talking about the evil attacks. And in Matthew 26, 28, this is my blood of the covenant, which poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins, is the key to close the open door of the enemy against your life. You also have to read the Bible every day. Why? Because in Ephesians 6, 17, you have to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's right. The sword is the offensive part of the armor of God. And we need this to fight back against the enemy. And in John 8.32, it says, And you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You've probably heard this from many famous Hollywood movies, but it's true. The truth will set you free. What's the truth? It's the word of God. And in Psalms 91, it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of Most High will rest in the shadow of Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God whom I trust. And surely he will save you from the fowler's there and from the deadly pestilence. Does it sound like COVID? Yep. So pray the Psalms 91 every day if you want to be protected. Here's the full armor of God in Ephesians 6. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand firm. That's right, firm. With the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So there are six pieces, guys. Six pieces in the full armor of God. It's not an accident. There's six, and these. it's very detailed. You can dig deeper. And I invite you guys, if you want to do a deeper Bible study, to study about what these, each of these pieces mean. And like I said before, praise and worship songs. In the Bible, in 1 Samuel 16, 23, when the Spirit from God came on Saul, David would take up his lyre and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. That's right. The evil spirit left him. Now, there's probably some theologians ask, look, God sent the evil spirit. God sent the evil one. He allowed the spirit. Or guess what? If you read the chapters in context before this, Saul became jealous of David that's the open door jealousy and that's why the evil spirit allowed was allowed to enter and attack him so maybe you have a jealous spirit i don't know what are the open doors in your life maybe the holy spirit is speaking to you right now there's a lot of open doors that's coming up we have a checklist later so don't worry guys we're gonna close the door of the enemy against your life because you have an identity in christ so by the Spirit in Zech. Yeah, yeah, we're going to skip this. Skip, 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 skip. So now we're going to deliverance. All right. We're going to take a little break. Hold on. I just wanted to say hi to everyone on Zoom. There, wow, there's like 15 people. Wow, hey guys. Hope you're blessed. Is anyone um, experiencing pain or uh, speak up? Because sometimes there's manifestations pain or burping or farting or vomiting already. Anyone? Because I'm going to drink water. I'm just stalling. I just wanted to drink. Yeah, um, feel, feel free guys to show your videos and unmute yourselves so we can have a discussion naman kasi diba, we're on Zoom. Yeah, so if you have any questions at all, just feel free to shoot them out. Voila! Yay! Great! So we'll move on. Yeah!
There we go. Muntik na. Muntik na mag-play my mute. <laughs> so now we'll go to step three. Remember the rat? Remember the trash? We're going to identify what are the evil spirits in our lives? What's the rat? We're going to identify the open door. What's the trash in our lives? How do we get rid of it? What's the open door? So right now, we'll, we'll pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to send a host of ministering angels to attend to our hurts, our needs, our pain, and infirmities. Heavenly Father, in Jesus Christ's name, I bind up and break any strong man and all unclean spirits working against inside me or against me. We bind the gatekeeper and we bind all hindering spirits of demonic reinforcements from interfering with this deliverance in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name, we bind up all the principalities, powers of the air, all demonic kingdoms, dominions, throne, and every demonic entity and unclean spirit working against me and our families. We put you on notice, Satan, and we are attacking you from our position of authority seated with the Lord Jesus Christ in the highest of heavenlies. We lose the angels of God to surround us right now. And we ask you, Father God, to lose a wall of fire like Zechariah 2.5 to surround us and our families right now in Jesus' name. We lose warrior angels with swords to go into the lowest portion of our bodies and surround us and separate us from the demons and the strong mass from each other and spoil the demons of their powers, armor, rank, and resources in Jesus Christ's name. We lose the sword of the Lord and cut off all connections between the demons, on the inside and the fallen angels and unclean spirits of the outside in Jesus Christ's name. Lord Jesus, we anoint and empower us with your anointing by the Holy Spirit to do the ministry and drive out these evil spirits through the power of your name. Give us all the gifts of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Allow us to hear your spirit clearly. Open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears and let us see into the spirit realm with understanding. Remove every spiritual distraction and scales that have blinded us in Jesus' name. Help us to discern the things that we don't understand and see. Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, revelation, discernment, and faith into the mysteries of your kingdom. We execute judgments written on all devils inside of us right now and we lose the judgments of God along with the fire. And burning destruction perpetual on the devil attacking us right now in Jesus' name, according to Psalm 149.9. We lose angels of God into attack formation to attack all foul spirits inside of us. Charge in Jesus Christ's name. Every unclean spirit that the Lord Jesus wants us to come out, come out of us now and go to where the Lord Jesus is sending you. Father God, we ask you to lose civil war into the devil's camp and cause every demon to attack one another now in Jesus Christ's name. We command the strong man to start throwing out the demons under its command now in Jesus Christ's name. We lose the arrows of the Lord dipped in the blood of Jesus to rain down and impale the demons in Jesus Christ's name. Angels of God, attack these spirits and cut the strong man away. I lose the fire of God. And the fear of the Lord and the fire destruction on every demon in Jesus Christ's name. Father God, we ask you to loose warrior angels to go in every cage and cage every demon by itself in a cage filled with your blood. We send Holy Ghost fire upon every devil in any every camp, any camp, and destroy every evil spirit of infirmity that is attacking our body in the name of Jesus. We break down and dismantle every demonic altar that has our picture or clothing or hair, and we smash them down now with the blood of Jesus. We rebuke and bind every astral projecting person who is trying to infiltrate our homes in the name of Jesus. And we cut off every assignment of the devil and his demons that is just trying to destroy our marriage in Jesus' name. Father God, we take back in the name of Jesus everything that the canker worm and the locust have eaten from our lives and our loved ones' lives in Jesus' name. We pour out fire upon every devil's head and every unclean spirit and every witch that has risen up against our family, our spouse, our children, our finances, our church, and us. We smite them seven times over and, de and destroy them never to rise again in Jesus' name. We cancel in the name of Jesus the spirit of premature death that is trying to cut our day short and we destroy his plan and assignment against our lives and release the Holy Spirit to destroy every blueprint 
of sickness from the spirit of death in Jesus' name. We hinder and frustrate every assignment of the devil and his demons and whatever methods they are using against us. We burn them down with the fire of the Holy Spirit. We shoot lightning into the devil's camp and upon every demon's head to confuse and destroy their game plan against our lives in Jesus' name. So if you're wondering where we got these prayers from, it's a combination of CCF prayers, CSB prayers, uh, Derek Prince, Jennifer Leclerc, John Ramirez, and Rebecca Brown. I just combined them all. So this PowerPoint is a combination of all. So what is binding and loosing? This, the scripture in context is Matthew 18, 18 to 19. Truly I tell you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you agree about anything they ask for, it, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So some people, they take this scripture out of context, and they think that as long as two of us pray, our prayers will be answered more. No. The context is actually church discipline. If you read the verses before this and after this, it's about disciplining people who are rebellious. And that's what it's talking about. It's talking about binding the spirits, binding people, rebellious people who need discipline. And we have to talk to them. We have to pray about them. And we have to bind the spirits and cast them out. All right, guys? That's the principle of binding and loosing. Here is a curse-breaking prayer. So this is one of the prayers. You can pray it together, guys. So even if you're on mute or your camera is off, just verbally say this, all right? I don't have to hear you. Just say it, all right? So we break down every demonic altar that has been set up against our us, our families, our loved ones, our ministry, and me. We paralyze every demon that has been assigned in our season right now in Jesus' name. We uproot every incantation and every spiritual roadblock that enemy has set against us. We pulverize every attack against me and we curse it to the root, never to return again in Jesus' name. We void every legal right of the enemy that has against my family. We go back a hundred generations on the father and mother side. Be destroyed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. We take back from our mind from all tormenting and scorning spirits that have implanted themselves in our minds and thoughts. We destroy and uproot them with the blood of Jesus and the finished word of the cross. We call back from the north, south, east, and west every fragmented piece of our minds and souls. We call them back in the name of Jesus and we speak to the mind to be whole, healed, and delivered out of the enemy's hands in Jesus' name. So, generational curses. Why did we say forgive the sins of our mom and dad? It's because in Exodus 34, 7, it says, maintaining love to the thousands, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty and punishes. He punishes the children and their children for the sins of their parents to the third and fourth generations. So sometimes we are suffering not because of our sin, but because of the sins of our parents. But Jesus wants to forgive us and Jesus wants to set us free. That's why we have to repent and renounce the generational curses of our parents. So this is the prayer. Once again, you can verbally say it with, even though you're mute and your cameras are off. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we confess that in the past, my ancestors and I have broken your laws and commandments. And this has brought a curse on us and our family. We renounce Satan and all of his demons and all of his personal and ancestral contracts with the occult. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, we repent and renounce all of our sins that I and my ancestors have committed. And we ask you to forgive our family in, in Jesus' name. We close all the doors that are opened to the demons through these sins. And now we break and loose ourselves and our descendants from all personal and generational curses in Jesus' name. We break and cancel all blood oaths. Contracts, covenants, rituals, pacts, and agreements with the devil and his demons by me or our ancestors and command the curses in Jesus' name. Loose me now and come out of me and my children and go to where Jesus is sending you. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit and release on me and my children the blessings of Abraham that I am entitled to in Jesus Christ's name. All right, so we're going to run through a checklist. This is a super comprehensive checklist. So if you have one of these sins, we're just going to repent and renounce it, okay? So here's what we'll do. I'm going to read along. And if you see 
uh, sin that resonates with you, you bind and cast it out. All right? So example, if you have the orphan spirit, if you were abandoned by your parents, you just say, I repent from the orphan spirit, I bind and cast it out in Jesus' name. So if you have anger, I repent from bitterness, resentment, rage, murder, revenge, self-hatred. You can hate yourself, guys, and that's anger. Hatred against God, hatred against others, an organization like the government, <laughs> and unforgiveness. We bind the spirit of anger and command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of anxiety, you're always anxious. We repent from this, Lord. We bind the spirit of anxiety and cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. Blasphemy, blasphemous thoughts, cursing, mocking, and slander. We repent from this, Lord. We command it, we bind the spirits of blasphemy and command it to leave right now in Jesus' name. Spirit of confusion, forget, frustration, and being forgetful. We repent from these, we bind it, and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Spirit of control, being too manipulative, wanting to be in control, wanting to be dominating, and being possessive. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it, and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Ooh, here's the Filipino favorite, being judgmental, fault-finding, accusing, argumentative, bickering. We repent from me. This criticizing spirit, Lord, we bind it when you cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Always being in tar darkness, torment. It's like there's a cloud dark of darkness over you. you. You can't get out of bed. That's it. This is it. So we repent from this, Lord. We bind and cast out the spirit of darkness in Jesus' name. Spirit of death, wanting to kill yourself or kill other people. Having a death wish or being sick. That's why there's a lot of Asian hate right, crime right now in, in America. And it's not an accident. It just came after Black Lives Matter. So there's a spirit of death wanting to kill each other. We repent from this, Lord. We bind it and cast it out in Jesus' name. Depression, we repent from it. We bind it and cast it out in Jesus' name. Being destructive. I was guilty of this before. Being a war freak. Too many video games. We repent of this, Lord. We bind the spirit of destruction and cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. Being deceitful, lying, denial, deception. I know someone who hasn't paid their debts yet because they lied to me. <laughs> repent. Joke now. So we repent from this, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out in Jesus' name. Being disappointed over and over again. This, being frustrated. This is a spirit, guys. We repent from this. We bind it and we cast it out in Jesus' name. Disobedience. Always being in rebellion. Has a problem with authority. That is a spirit. We repent from it, Lord. We bind and cast it out in Jesus' name. Having divorce. Maybe not you. Maybe your relatives. Their divorce runs in your family. It's a spirit. So we repent of it, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out in Jesus' name. Always being doubtful. Unbelief. Skepticism. If that's you, repent. We bind the spirit of doubt when you cast it out in Jesus' name. Dread. Ooh. It's, mm, for the lack of the better term, it's always assuming bad things will happen. It's always being a pessimist. Always being nega and toxic. Shout out to my friend. Yo, toxic friends. Just kidding. So we repent, we repent from these. And we bind it and we cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. But wait, there's more. Being envy, always envious of others, always checking other people's Instagram and Facebook. We repent from these, we bind it and cast it out in Jesus' name. Ooh, this is rampant in the Philippines. Fear, worry, anxiety, panic, terror, phobia, fear of death, fear of the future, fear of accidents, fear of loneliness, fear of rejection, fear of love, fear of commitment, fear of animals, germ, sickness, Satan. Fear of success, fear of going outside. We repent of this, Lord. We bind it when you cast it out in Jesus' name. Spirit of greed, being too greedy, we bind it when you cast it out in Jesus' name. Hopelessness, idolatry, and indifference. We repent from this, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out in Jesus' name. Always feeling inferior and being insecure, we repent from this, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. Intellectualism. Ooh, two logical people need to always understand, to rationalize, always perfectionist, always competitive, always pleasing other people. They're very insecure, actually. So we, re re we repent from this, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus' name. Lazy. Being lazy, Lord, we repent from it, we bind it, and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Legalism, always being 
always being critical, always condemning, always judgmental. We repent from this, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being lonely, we repent from it, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being manipulative and mockery, mocking other people and being passive. We repent from all of these, Lord, and we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Ooh, Philippine favorite, pride and arrogance and vanity. We repent from this, Lord, and we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus' name. Prejudice, wrong spelling. I will change you later. So, spirit of prejudice, we repent from this, we bind it, and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Racism and rebellion against God, your boss, your parents, church, teacher, government, husband, elders. We repent from this, Lord, and we bind it, and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Rejection. This is a big one in the Philippines. There's three types, guys. Self-rejection. Rejecting yourself. Hating yourself. Fear of rejection. Nothing's happening yet, but you're anticipating bad things. The spirit of rejection. Just, you just love to reject other people. And rejection in the womb. So when you meet, your mother was pregnant with you, there was rejection already. You absorbed it. So we repent of this, Lord. We bind and cast out all the spirits of rejection in Jesus Christ's name. Another big one in the Philippines. Religiosity. Being too obsessed with rituals, doctrines, and legalism. We repent of this, Lord. We bind and cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. Shame, guilt, deception, lying spirits. We repent of this, Lord. We bind it and cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. Self-pity, self-righteousness, unselfishness. We repent from all three of these. We bind it and cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. This is the funny one. Slumber. Parati pagod. And if you know a friend who always goes to church and falls asleep there, it's a spirit of slumber. That's why if your pastor always says, Hoy gising na, or hey, wake up guys, why are you sleeping in church? That's the spirit of slumber. It's a demonic attack. It's not the aircon. It's not the comfy seat. It's the slumber, guys. So we, we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being stubborn. Oh, I have so many Christian friends. We repent from this and we bind it and cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Tension and being in torment and having a lot of trauma. We repent of this, Lord. We bind it and cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Unforgiveness, a big one in the Philippines. We repent from this, Lord, and we bind and cast, cast it out in Jesus Christ's name. Vandalism, violence. We repent from both, Lord, and we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being worthless, worthlessness, inadequacy, being unworthy, insecure, and pity. And always being worryful. We repent from these, Lord. We, we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. All right. Whew. Let's take a breather. Now, this is a soul tie. What's a soul tie, guys? A soul tie is when you have a soul tie with someone. So here's an example of a good soul tie. In Matt 1 Samuel 18, 1 to 3, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. So they formed a soul tie. These like there's are like soulmates. That's the secular term, worldly term, soulmates. You can become a soulmate against someone. This is a good version. But did you know there is a bad version of a soul tie? Here's the biblical sample. Do you know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, two will become one flesh. So if you have sex with a lot of people, you're forming a lot of soul ties. It's like two pieces of wood and you put sticky glue on each side of the wood and you slap them together. When you rip them both apart, pieces of the wood will stick on each other. That's a soul tie. So if you had sex with someone and... In the beginning, you weren't really an angry person, but your partner was angry. And when you broke up and left, you had sex, and you, you suddenly became an angry person. That's it. That's a soul tie. And it's not just sex. It's also unforgiveness. So if you're always the victim of a boss or a parent or your enemy or unforgiveness, and you're always lashing out at you, that's a soul tie. It's like, for me, how I experience it is, is whenever I'm in traffic, once upon a time, I was in traffic, guys. Well, a car, a, jeep, a car cut me off. This driver uh, lowered his window. He flipped a middle finger at me and sped off. 
So I forget about it. But every time I get cut off or every time I'm in traffic and my head gets angry, I always think of this guy who flipped me off. So that's a soul tie. It's not just sex. It's also other methods. Somebody swindling you of your money, someone um, slapping you or hurting you or gossiping you, someone who made you angry. It's a soul tie and we have to cut it, guys. So how do I know if I have a soul tie with someone, Miles? Here's the symptoms. You keep thinking about this person. You won't shut up about them. You're feeling too attached to, about them. That's why if, if you look at a lot of legal cases, the abuser and victims, they're always talking about each other. Why? Because they were abused and there is a soul tie. Rape victims. Sexual abuse victims like Ravi. Defending the person or your family and friends and say that they're toxic for you. So if you're defending toxic people, that's what? That's a soul tie. Getting bad habits of the person, like what I said earlier. That's a soul tie. Constantly dreaming and fantasizing about other people and can't move on. Soul tie. So before we go on to this, if there is someone that the Holy Spirit's revealing to you that you have a soul tie to and giving you a minute to repent, and you cut the soul tie. Just say, example, example, uh, Mark. So I cut the soul tie between me and Mark in Jesus Christ's name. That's it. Just verbally say it. Even if you're mute, go ahead. So I'll give you a minute, guys. I'm not saying Mark is bad. It's just an example. <laughs> so if you're angry with Miles, I cut the soul tie with Miles in Jesus Christ's name. Before we move on. And I'm going to take a water break. Cut the soul tie between me and blank. I'm sure the Holy Spirit's bringing names to you right now. Your mom, your dad, your boss, your ex, all your sexual partners. If you don't know the names anymore, you just say, I just cut all the soul ties between me and all the people I have slept with in Jesus' name. So if you feel like there's more, just pause this video or just keep cutting them. All right. So now we'll move on to the flesh checklist. So if you're, once again, we're going to bind and cast out. So you have to verbally say bind and cast out. So we repent from addictions to drugs, Lord, alcohol, computer games, social media, the internet, cigarettes, sweets, caffeine, and other things. We bind and cast out the spirit of addiction in Jesus Christ's name. We repent from ador abortion and adult we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Spirit of compromise and deception, we repent from both of these. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Taking drugs and eating disorder, we repent from these, Lord. We bind and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being exaggeration, flattering others and having fetishes, we repent from all of these, Lord. We bind and we cast them all out now in Jesus Christ's name. Fornication and being frigid, we repent from these, Lord. We bind and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Gambling and gossip, we repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Homosexuality, incest, and incubus, succubus spirit, and lust, we repent from all of these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Lying and masturbation, we repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. The love of man, money, mammon, idolatry, and cheating on money. We repent from these, Lord. We bind and cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Murder and having a spirit of poverty. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Spirit of poverty is you're always kept poor. No matter what do you do, what job you do, or what business you start up, it always fails. Spirit of poverty. So rape, sexual perversion, we repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Stealing and suicide. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus' name. Oh, the number one sin. One of the top in the Philippines. Being ungrateful and unbelief. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Vanity and having the wrong relationships live in. Wow. Philippines. 
We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So we'll close it with this. Dear Heavenly Father, because you have forgiven me. You can read it along, guys. Read along. Dear Heavenly Father, because you have forgiven me for all of my sins through the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I now forgive blank in Jesus Christ's name. That there is unforgiveness in your life, like your boss, your ex-lover, your parents, your siblings, your churchmate, your enemies. It's time to forgive. For unforgiveness is one of the biggest open doors for the enemy to attack you. That's why your prayers are not answered and you're not getting breakthrough. It's because of unforgiveness. And now I claim in Jesus' name, based on his shed blood, that any evil influences that were in my life are now rendered powerless and cleansed from my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you still have unforgiveness in your heart, guys, just forgive. Just forgive. Mm, this is now the infirmity in others. So remember in earlier, um, in the Bible study earlier, sickness is from the enemy. So having abnormal grief, agony, crying, and accidents, we repent from these, Lord, we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Having allergies, asthma, and barrenness, we repent from these, Lord, we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Bitter root judgments, always be, being be bitter. Example, I will never grow up to be like my dad or mommy. You know, that's a bitter root judgment. It's a vow. We repent from these and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Cancer and depression, we repent from these both. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Diabetes and discouragement, we repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Fear of the dark, female problems and financial difficulty, we repent from all of these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Hearing demonic voices, heart disease and heartache, we repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being hopeless, having insomnia, and making inner vows. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Being always in isolation, having a mental illness, and nightmares. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. Po Spirit of poverty, suicide, and shock. We repent from these, Lord. We bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. We, have a, uh, we repent from sorrow and violence. We we bind it and we cast it out now in Jesus Christ's name. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we command all evil spirits that are in me or around me as a result of our sin sinful sexual relationships to leave us now forever and not to send similar spirits or replacements or reinforcement spirits to us in Jesus' name. And based on his shed blood, I claim victory. We claim victory over these sins in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Also, this is a special section for people who are sexually molested, sexually abused, or raped. This is a simple prayer. You just surrender it to Jesus. Because I have friends who were sexually molested. These are women who were, who were sexually molested by their pamankin or someone they trusted. And when they grow up, they had an anger for men. And right now, they're still single. And they blame God. They blame men for not having any uh, partners. Well, guess what? It's because they have an open door for the enemy. We have to close that by forgiving the attacker. Yep, yep. Because guess what? It was from the enemy. So if this is you, you don't have to turn on your camera. You don't have to turn on your mic. You just verbally say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I was sexually abused by blank. I renounce having my body used in this way. We claim the cleansing of our body by the blood of Jesus and the healing of our inner pain by your Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cancel any ground that the evil was, has gained in our life. As a result of this abuse, we break any demonic bondages or soul ties. We command any evil spirits that were transferred to us through this experience to leave us now forever. We will trust in you to use this experience for our good in life. Heavenly Father, we claim through the blood of Jesus Christ our forgiveness and cleansing. We now dedicate our bodies to you to be used for your glory. 
by the authority that we have in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the, in the powerful name of our Lord Jesus. We renounce and command all evil spirits, every enemy of God that is in me or around me because of these sins, to leave me forever and to never return. You are not allowed to send back any similar spirits, nor any replacements or reinforcements. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So that's just one of the examples of getting rid of the rats and the trash. Remember, we can cast out these spirits, but sometimes deliverance is instant. Sometimes it's gradual. So sometimes the trash gradually leaves. Sometimes the trash instantly leaves. It's up to you and the Holy Spirit. Ask him, what kind of healing and deliverance do you need? Because we want to live full and abundant lives in John 10.10. 10. Now, this is the occult checklist. So occult is bad, guys. So we're just going to repent from each one and we're going to bind and cast out at the very end. So I'll read it along with you guys. We repent from albulario, animal sacrifices, anting-anting, astrology, astral projection, automatic writing, black and white magic, blood compact, channeling spirit of the glass, charms, crystals, amulets and bracelets, clairvoyance, crystal ball, consulting mediums, psychics and ghosts, cutting the self, curses, kulam, demonic tattoos, divination, ESP, fate healing, feng shui, fetishism, fortune telling, Gayuma, ghosts, horror movies, hypnosis, iridology, Latin oration, levitation, mind reading, occult books and movies, Ouija boards, palm reading, pyrid pyramidology, Reiki healing, and rod and pendulum. We repent from these all, Lord. We repent from seances, shrines, silver mind control, som PSI, sorcery, Spirit guides, speaking to the dead, speaking in trance, superstition, table lifting, tarot cards, tawas, telekinesis, telepathy, third eye, toning, transcendental meditation, witchcraft, kulam, and yoga meditation. So this is from John Ramirez. If you're interested in all these special prayers, you can just Google or watch John Ramirez's YouTube videos. He's an ex-Satanist. He was a high-ranking ex-Satanist who is now a believer. And he has lots of stories about how angels and Christ helped, freed him from bondages. And this is his special prayer against occult. So you can read it out loud. All spirits of Santiera, Palo Mayombe, Chango, Ekinar, New Age spirits, false holy spirits, spirits of divination, and python spirits, come out of us now in Jesus Christ's name. Lord Jesus, we confess the sins of our ancestors. We ask for your forgiveness. We now reject and disown all the sins of our ancestors. We lose the sword of the Lord and cut and chop off all kundalini, python spirits, mind control spirits, squid and octopus spirits off our spines and our bodies in Jesus Christ's name. We renounce and rebuke all witchcraft, occult practices, divination, and sorcery that we have ever made in Jesus Christ's name. We break off in Jesus' name any residue of any demonic kind, and we cancel every demon that is trying to sneak into our dreams in Jesus Christ's name. We break your power and cut off all control spirits connected to our mind and our matriarchal and patriarchal control spirits connected to me in Jesus Christ's name. We break and cut all psychic hereditary ley lines. We lose our family and ourselves and all spirits trying to paralyze us in Jesus' name. We destroy all demonic activity and every demonic thought that has been opened in our lives and we shut them down now in Jesus Christ's name. We renounce all satanic assignments that are directed towards us and we cancel them in the name of Jesus. Every curse that Satan and his workers have put on us. We reject any and every way in which Satan has claimed ownership over us. We forbid any demons from passing down on to the next generation and we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ who purchased us with his own blood. We reject all blood sacrifices whereby Satan may claim ownership of us and we declare ourselves to be eternally and completely signed over and committed to the Lord Jesus. We renounce any allegiances to the kingdom of darkness and Satan in Jesus' name.
We renounce and uproot every demonic word that we have spoken and given the devil legal rights to over our lives. Be broken right now in Jesus' name. We renounce any spirit husband or spirit wife or any demonic spiritual divorce papers that have come into our life through dreams. Be destroyed. We destroy them all in Jesus' name. We curse at the root every false word of prophecy spoken over our lives, our families, our marriage, our children, and ministry in Jesus Christ's name. And we uproot from our lives all sickness, depression, and oppression trying to operate in our lives. Be destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And we break off any backlash, any retaliation, any transfer of spirits that is trying to come against me, my family, my loved ones, my finances in the name of Jesus. We bind them all and cast it out in Jesus' name. So we're done with the occult. Now it's cult. Being part of a cult is bad. It is an open door. So we have to stop it. So once again, we'll repent from, we'll read the list, we'll repent from all of these and we'll cast it out at the very end. So, Lord, Heavenly Father, we repent from ancestral worship, Antichrist spirit, Baha'i, Buddhism, children of God, Christian sciences, Dating the An, Eastern Star, Ekinar, Existentialism, Falun Gong, being in a frat or a sorority, Hare Krishna, Hinduism, humanism, idolatry, Iglesia ni Cristo, Islam, Jehovah's Witness, Kabbalah, Marxism, Masonry, Mormonism, New Age Religion, Name Above Every Name, Paganism, Palo Mayombe, PBMA, Rizalista, Satanism, Santiera, Scientology, Shintoism, Seventh-day Adventist, The Local Church, Taoism, The Way International, Theosophical Society, and The Forum. We repent from all of these, Lord, and we bind it all and we cast it out now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we repent of all the manifestation that may have caused a spirit of witchcraft, generational curses, or strongholds to invade and influence our lives. So we can read this out loud again. We repent that anything that has caused witchcraft or generational curses or strongholds to invade and influence our lives. We pray for your forgiveness. We are sorry that we hurt and we have caused pain through others in Jesus' name. We also want to forgive those who have harmed us and tormented us. Today, we make a decision to turn our lives over to you and to walk in God's love in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we break all the curses of witchcraft, abuse, and perversion over our flesh, and we surrender totally to you. We break all the curses against our family in the name of Jesus. We break all the curses and any covenants made against me in the name of Jesus. We plead for the blood of Christ and we thank you, Heavenly Father, because your word declares that you will deliver us from every evil work and preserve us for your heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever. Amen. So spirit, husband, wife, marriage, breaking spirits, infidelity, wife swapping, divorce, and frigidity come out of us now in Jesus Christ's name. I'll just pray for you guys. Uh, all vagabond spirits, hindering spirits, blessing blockers, and religious spirits come out now in Jesus Christ's name. All spirits of sickness, premature death, destruction, root of bitterness, cancer, asthma, and all infirmities come out of us now in Jesus Christ's name. We speak healing to everyone watching this right now in Jesus' name. We now bind all the spirits attached to the curses and covenants affecting our lives, our families, and our marriages. We lose ourselves and our families from all inherited strongholds, sickness, disease, and addictions. We lose the peace and the healing power of God to invade our lives and heal our bodies in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the miracle deliverance from curses and strongholds in our lives. Root out and destroy everything that is in me that is not from you, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Cleanse our heart, cleanse our womb, and cleanse every organ in our body in Jesus' name. This is a declaration, so let's verbally say this out loud. In the name of Jesus, 
I command all evil spirits to leave me now. I lose myself for all control and bondages of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I lose myself from all soul ties and enemy evil strategies of the enemy. We renounce Satan and confess our allegiance to the Lord Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. We bind every assignment of the enemy against our family and I, and we lose the Spirit of God into our lives. Father God, I thank you for blessing us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So we're almost at the end. Here's the ending prayer. We seal all the doorways and entry points that allow these demons to enter through us with the blood of Jesus. We seal this deliverance with the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, release your fire upon us right now and pour out upon our spirit the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and self-control. We bind all the demonic backlash, retaliation, revenge, or retribution for attacking our us, our families, our finances, our businesses, our businesses, our ministries, our purpose and destinies in Jesus Christ's name. So remember, we're done. Yay. So remember, starting today, you will be walking free. Let's remember the top five most powerful weapons, the name of Jesus. So you can bind and cast out these demons, guys. You don't have to call me at 3 a.m. and say, Miles, help me. Demons are attacking me. Waking me up at 3 a.m. You can do it yourself. Just listen to the replay on this YouTube or on Facebook. I'll put it on the channel. Let's watch the replay and again and again and until you can bind and cast out by yourself. Remember to pray for the blood of Jesus over you and everything that you own to protect you. Remember to read the word of God every day so that you can fight back the enemy. Remember to pray that Bleh. Play praise and worship songs to weaken the enemy's attacks against you and to pray and ask for the full armor of God every day in Ephesians 6. If you can memorize it, that's even better. So now, probably you've, you felt 80% delivered. There's a lot of rats who've left and there's a lot of garbage that the Holy Spirit wants you to be free from, healed from, and delivered from. Maybe there's still some left. Ask the Holy Spirit for the grace to reveal the remaining rats, trash, the remaining spirits, the remaining trauma in our lives in Jesus' name. And remember to share the testimony when you're free. Why? Because in Mark 5, 16 to 18, and this is the last slide. We're done, guys. It says, as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Remember, Jesus set this guy free. But in verse 19, he said, Jesus did not let him. That's shocking, right? What? I, thought, I thought Jesus said, come and follow me. But he said, go to your hometown. Watch this. To your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy upon you. So this man obeyed. So this man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Do you want to give the enemy a black eye? You have to tell the people about deliverance, about how Jesus set you free. You see, this guy obeyed. And Decapolis means 10. 10 cities. 10 Decapolis cities. This guy shared the deliverance of what Jesus done for him in 10 cities. And all the people were amazed. Revival broke out. And this is one of the keys to revival. It's actually deliverance. But guess what? So many Christians are too busy fighting amongst themselves. So that's why there's no revival here in this country. Yep, churches fighting churches over essentials and non-essentials. But you, what's your job? Your job is to, verse 19, tell people about the Lord. Because I have so many people. We pray for deliverance. They pray for their healing, repent from their sins, and they tell no one. And guess what? The evil spirit came back. And that's your fault. You did it. Share the testimony. You didn't give God the glory. You didn't thank God. You just, oh, thank you, God. You just treated him like an ATM machine. Thank you, God, for deliverance. Bye-bye. Then you don't honor him or worship him. Remember to share the testimony. Send us a testimony on Milestone Ministries or on Artbeat, guys. Reach out to us. You can add me on Facebook, all right? Because we want to be your friends. We want to minister to you so that you can set other people free as well. Amen. So we're done, guys. Finally, 
Ah, so tired. Miles, someone's in the chat asking asking a question. So we'll we'll answer the questions now. So we'll end the live stream, guys. And if you want to come in, if you want to share the testimony, or if you have questions, the Zoom link is there on the video description. There's the Zoom ID and password. Just type it and join us, guys. So we're going to end the live stream now. God bless you guys. Bye.